Hi everybody, my name is Ainsley Napke and I am Mr. Guess's daughter. Some of you might have him as a teacher, but he invited me here tonight to talk to you about Rockwern's first ever bridge building competition, part of your STEAM week. Now, I am a civil engineer and so tonight I am here to talk to you about civil engineers and what that means for you as an elementary or middle schooler. Now you might not be thinking about what career path you might want to take once you're, you know, a little bit older, um, but STEAM Week is supposed to give you an opportunity to hear about different careers in science and math and all those fields that maybe might interest you. So hopefully you'll have some fun tonight and learn something too. So, so I'm going to start with just a little bit of my background. Um, I graduated high school from Williamsburg High School. I took a lot of honors courses in math and science. And then when I went on to get my bachelor's degree, my bachelor's degree for college is in civil and environmental engineering. Um, so after I graduated college, I started working for an engineering firm. Um, and I was designing roads. Um, and now, I actually work for the Claremont County Water Resources Department and I'm a project manager there so I handle all of the projects that come through our office um, that pertain to water and sewer utilities. Now I know that's a lot of fancy words but hopefully I can break this down for you. So there are a lot of different types of engineers. Now I threw at you that I am a civil and environmental engineer, but let me give you, <coughs> excuse me, let me give you some examples of other types of engineers and what they do. So we also, besides civil and environmental, there are also mechanical engineers, and they create machinery, they design cars, they do all sorts of neat stuff. There are also electrical engineers who design all the electrical systems that go in our houses, in your school, um, and even any building that you can think of, they've designed the electrical parts. There are aerospace engineers who design airplanes. There are computer engineers who design video games and computers and all sorts of cool stuff. But what I'm really here tonight for is to talk to you about civil engineers. Now, civil engineers, as you can see on the slide, Tap this slide. Civil engineers design a lot of neat stuff. So you can see on the left side, we design roads, we design retaining walls like you can see in the middle, and then we also design bridges, which is what we're here to do tonight. Let me click to the next slide, please. Sorry for the uh, technical issues, but we're getting it figured out. So here are some images of other things civil engineers design. So this is just an example of um, a road design. And then the other pictures show roads and buildings um, that you'd see in your community that civil engineers have designed. Oops, I'll go back one more. So tonight we're going to give you an opportunity to talk to talk to your family and work as a team to create a bridge. Now, a bridge is something that, you know, you see it on roads, you see it in your community, all over the place, but probably you haven't thought of how to actually construct a bridge before. Um, and so we're going to go over some tips for you tonight and then give you the opportunity to build your own bridge out of popsicle sticks. So. There's a lot of different uses of bridges, and you can see them listed here on the slide. So, bridges are used for car traffic, pedestrians on bikes or walkers. Um, there are different types of bridges. You know, you've seen downtown Cincinnati, the double decker bridge, bridges for trains, pipelines, all sorts of stuff. So, there's a lot of different uses for bridges, um, but most of them have the same components, which will give you um, a clear image of what 
engineers go through when they design a bridge. All right, let me slip to the next slide. Now this image shows you a few different types of bridges. Now these are very complex and um, we're going to create something a lot simpler, but these give you an idea of what engineers in the professional world can do once they've graduated college and have gotten a lot of training and education. So on the top left we have arch bridges, we have girder bridges, truss bridges, which is what we're going to be working on today. And then there's also cable stayed bridges or suspension bridges, which you may have seen before. So now we're going to dive into the instructions of your activity for tonight. Now that I've given you a little background on bridges and engineers and where I fit into all that. So let's exit our PowerPoint. <coughs> Give me just a second. Okay, so in the Ziploc bag that you received at your table, there is an instruction sheet that looks just like the one that's on the screen right now. So if you would, go ahead and pull that sheet out and follow along with me as I try to um, show you how you're going to go about this process of building a bridge. <coughs> so the first step is we're going to go to our truss pictures. You also have this sheet in your bag. So you want to take a look at this at the same time as you look at your instruction sheet. But this picture shows a lot of different options for truss bridges that you can try to build tonight. And you'll notice that some of them are more complex than others and some are super simple. Um, so you choose, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to choose a truss configuration that you like and that you think is feasible to complete in the one hour construction time frame. So once you have chosen your truss, then you're going to move on to the graph paper. But I will give you one tip of advice. Since probably very few of you have ever built a bridge before, either out of popsicle sticks or out of some other material, I would really recommend that you choose to make a truss bridge that is very simple. Um, it's going to make it a lot more fun of an activity for you because you'll actually have time to complete it and then to test it. Whereas if you choose one of the complex um, trusses with a lot of members, a lot of pieces, you're going to spend so much time constructing and trying to get in a rush to finish that you're not, you might not get to test your bridge. So choose simple and you should have a fun time tonight. So here's the other key with choosing your truss. You're going to want to choose something that you can make long enough to be 20 inch span. Now you might not know what a span means, but basically that means from the two endpoints of the bridge, which are going to be supported by a table or desk, the span is the distance between them. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you need your bridge to be 20 inch span so that it can, it can cross between the two desks, okay? All right, so we are gonna flip to our graph paper. Now you have two pieces of graph paper inside your paper. So what you're gonna do is trim off the white edge of one of your sheets and you're going to tape the two sheets together like this to make one long sheet. Now mine's already been used because this is what I use to make my bridge. Um, but it'll give you an idea of how long your truss needs to be. So your bridge is going to be as long as both of those graph pieces together. Okay? So once you've got your graph paper taped together, 
<coughs> excuse me, once you got your graph paper taped together, you are ready to start drawing. So you're going to pull out your pencil and your ruler. Now don't do it yet because you still need to listen to the video, but you're going to know the steps once you have time to build your own. So this is my pencil. Now I'm going to do it freehand since I can't really put a ruler up on the screen, but you guys have a ruler in your bag, so use that so you can make straight lines. Now I'm going to choose a very simple um, truss configuration for mine just to give you an example and hopefully you'll choose something simple too just for so that the activity is real easy for you. So <coughs> I'm going to start with my pen and like I said before my bridge needs to be as long as the paper and you want it to be a symmetrical bridge. So if I make my truss, I don't want to make I don't want to make a truss like the tr oh sorry. Let me erase that. And I'm going to use a straight line tool. Okay. Now we're ready. So if I make my first line like this, I don't want to make my next line like that. Does that make sense? So you want your bridge to be symmetrical. So instead, <coughs> I'm going to undo that last line, and I'm going to go back to my line tool. And I'm going to draw it similar to about like that. So you can see my triangle looks symmetrical, and I'm well on my way to my first truss. So, Next, you're going to continue this process all the way down your sheet. So I'm just going to do it real quick. So if it's not perfect, that's okay. Let's see. Okay. I've got my first members drawn. And you can see... And most of my triangles, even though I was drawing it freehand, are all pretty much the same size and they're the same angles between the two truss members. So next, if you saw this bridge in real life, do you think that it would stay together or fall apart? Well, if you ask me, I think this bridge is going to fall apart because you don't have your bottom truss pieces connected. So the next step is connecting your bottom truss pieces like this and for more stability you can also connect the top ones just like that okay now you have never seen a one side of a bridge without the other side of the truss so we are going to do this twice so you're gonna have enough graph paper in your bag that you're going to draw out your design twice. And that is going to be so that you can make two sides of your bridge and then we'll connect them. We'll talk about that in a second. So once you've drawn one, you're going to draw it again, the exact same thing on the other sheets of paper. Now, some of you might be wondering why are we drawing a bridge and not constructing a bridge with our popsicle sticks. Well, engineers go through a long process before they actually start building of planning their design, drawing it up, and then sometimes even making revisions. Um, I'm not going to make any revisions to mine today, <coughs> but since you can see all the different truss configurations on your sheet, Engineers could easily decide, nope, I need a different type of bridge in order to fit the needs of this project. So that's why we draw it on the paper, so that you have time to draw it, and then if you miss it or mess it up, you can use your eraser, erase, and start again, all before constructing. So now that I've got my truss drawn on the sheet, next is time to get moving with the construction. So I'm going to take my popsicle sticks that are in my bag 
and I'm going to begin laying them out on top of the lines that I've drawn <coughs> to create my truss. Now, if you're just laying out your popsicle sticks, you're going to need some way to attach them so that the truss is made. So there's also glue in your bag. So once you've laid out all your popsicle sticks, next you're going to um, glue them all together. Now you might need, depending on how you draw your truss, you might need to cut or, <clears throat> you know, cut some popsicle sticks to make them shorter pieces. Now we're really going to make a rule now that all the parents are the only people who can use the X-Acto knives to cut the popsicle sticks. Even if you're an older kid, I'm sure you think you can do it. But we're going to keep you extra safe tonight, so only parents cutting the popsicle sticks, okay? So, let's see. I think that's it. So once you've got your popsicle sticks laid out, you're going to begin gluing. Once you've got them all glued together, you've got your two truss pieces all glued together, but somehow you need to attach them together to make your bridge. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do, and I'll try and show you on mine. So here's my two truss pieces, and you can see them on both sides, but the way that you connect them is with cross pieces. Like you can see here, this is the bottom of my bridge. Now, these cross pieces are two popsicle sticks stuck together, so you're going to glue two popsicle sticks together to make a sturdier base for your bridge and that's going to make it easier to load your bridge for the testing. Now you'll also want to do those same cross pieces on the top and it's okay if those are just one. Well, it looks like you have now got your bridge and I think that I've covered all the important instructions. So, after you have your bridge done, all completed within the one hour time frame, then it's going to be time to go to your testing station. So there's going to be a few testing stations around the room, and you're going to take your bridge to the testing stations, and they're going to load, <coughs> excuse me, load the weights onto your bridge, and they're going to weigh your bridge down enough until it breaks. Now I know you just put a bunch of work into that bridge and you just worked so hard and now we're gonna break it, but I promise you're going to have a blast. It's so fun to watch. So once your bridge is broken, you can take home your broken pieces or you can throw them away. Um, but the main purpose of the testing is to see which family, <coughs> which family's bridge can hold the most weight. Now I know everybody, every kid loves a little competition, so hopefully you can get in the competitive spirit and have some fun with this. But don't get too competitive, because remember, it's just an activity. Um, anyway, so at the end, um, the teachers and the staff who are helping at this event are going to load the bridges, see who can hold the most weight until it cracks, and then, um, then you'll have your winner. Um, so just a few reminders before you actually get started. There are staff and teachers around the room. If you need help, um, raise your hand, and hopefully they'll be able to assist you. If you need extra supplies, like popsicle sticks or glue, um, Raise your hand again and hopefully they can help you out. Obviously I can't help you because I'm not here. Um, let's see. So here's just a few more tips. So you've got your bridge. I will con instruct you. Make sure you work as a team. Um, engineers work in teams for every aspect of design, construction, all of it. So it's important that you work well together and that you give everyone in your family, your team, the opportunity to 
help with the bridge. So you don't just want one person doing the whole thing, um, but you want to make sure that everybody contributes and that everybody gets a voice for how they think the bridge should be built. Um, and your final reminder, parents are the only ones using the X-Acto knives. So kids, leave them down. If you need a, pee, a popsicle stick cut, ask mom or dad and hopefully they can help you. I think that's all the instructions I have and all of my last minute reminders. Um, make sure you have fun. Make sure you choose a simple truss construction so that you can finish in the one hour time frame. And then best of luck to you as you test your bridge and hopefully win the competition. I am so glad that I was able to be here tonight and to you know, show you this activity, but also show you what engineers do and why maybe you'll become an engineer one day. So best of luck, have fun. I'll see you later, bye.